And uh, this is David Triana. I am the president of Conexion Media Group, and we welcome you to our show, Making Connections Interview Show. We're going to do the virtual version this time through Zoom, and we got a wonderful uh, guest, uh, Nicole Snyder, who's standing by. Uh, Making Connections is one of the products of Conexion Media Group. Among the other products that we have is the Conexion Bilingual Publication. It's a monthly publication that is uh, published uh, throughout the area, distributed throughout the region from Tallahassee all the way to Mobile and points south of Mobile. And uh, it's Spanish and English. And we also have a section in Portuguese for the Portuguese community, the Brazilian community that is uh, growing also here in the Emerald Coast. Uh, Conexion Media Group focuses on the growing Hispanic and multicultural community as far as the products that we do via Conexion, this show, Making Connections. Uh, we also do it bilingual uh, whenever we have to. And then uh, in addition to that, Conexion Media Group also uh, conducts networking socials throughout the region. We're going to have one coming up in June, hopefully in the or in Pensacola at the Wahoo Stadium. Uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. We'll be announcing that networking social as soon as we nail it down. And then we also do community events. Uh, we are very happy because uh, this past uh, March on the 20th, uh, we were able to uh, conduct our third annual International Festival Fort Walton Beach. Uh, obviously, we've been all going through the pandemic and uh, it's been difficult uh, to do activities like that. But we are glad that we were able to uh, do that event uh, after uh, postponing it last year. And it was a great success. It was wonderful multiculturalism there galore with over 60 nations uh, represented in folklore and music, uh, live music and DJ music. We also had uh, over 50 vendors. And uh, we thank all our sponsors, all our vendors, and uh, all the entertainers and everyone that uh, participated, including the volunteers from the high schools and others, because thanks to the success of the festival, we were able to uh, donate uh, $5,000 to the Saving Grace Women's Home which uh, here in Florida, which was the uh, nonprofit organization that we selected uh, to uh, benefit through the festival. And uh, last month, uh, we were able to donate $5,000 uh, to them. Um, again, the um, Making Connections virtual uh, uh, show uh, that's going on right now, like all the shows that we do in the, uh, in the past, uh, bring in interesting uh, persons from throughout the region, uh, people that are doing some wonderful things like Nicole Snyder, who's coming up here soon, and others to uh, tell us about their programs, to tell us about the things that, that they do. Uh, we also bring in interesting people that are not necessarily you know, running a program or an activity, but uh, they just uh, have uh, an interesting life. So that's what we do here with Making Connections. And uh, we're gonna come right back with Nicole Snyder, who is the Student Services Coordinator for the Take Stock in Children program. We'll be back with Nicole. Dear Mrs. Crandall, it's easy to get so busy we can forget there are others who need our help. Some people have eyes to see, a friend in need of help. Let's work on your reading, okay? Some people Ten. have ears to hear. The umpire said, you're safe. Good job, Max. Thanks. Vanessa, you're next. They show us how much they care with quiet sun. At the seashore, you can learn about the tides through the treasures the sea throws on the beach. Every day, the of constant change. I am really proud of you. Mama, by taking the time to help my daughter read, you've become her hero and mine. Make a difference. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back uh, to Making Connections. We have a wonderful guest, as I mentioned, Nicole Snyder. She is the Student Services Coordinator for the Take Sock in Children program. Welcome to Making Connections, Nicole. How are you doing? Hi, David. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on here. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with our interview because I, I am very interested in this program. I've read about it. Uh, you sent me some great information. We met last year at, at a chamber event, I believe. And I said, man, that is a wonderful program. So tell us a little bit first about, about you, Nicole, and how you got involved with this great program. 
All right. So my name is Nicole Snyder. And like you said, I'm the student services coordinator for Take Stock and Children. I started working for Take Stock about three years ago. Um, it's been an amazing experience working for them, but I also am a volunteer. So I like it so much that I volunteer on the side with my own job um, as a mentor, which I can't wait to tell you about what all of it entails. Um, so the Take Stock program, we're a mentoring, student advocacy, and scholarship program mm -hmm. in, in Florida. So um, we, we take students from uh, different households, usually students from households that meet the free and reduced lunch criteria, and we match them with mentors in the community who meet with them at school and we offer them um, advocacy services. So our goal is to help students who are interested in reaching a post-secondary education to um, achieve that, who might've not had the same opportunities as other students. So we help them by matching them with a mentor who meets with them by providing college readiness services. And when they finish our program, they receive a college scholarship. Wow, that is wonderful. So the, uh, these students have to uh, submit an application to, uh, to become part of this program, right? So it's a selective yes. process. It is a selective process, and we try to bring as many kids in as we can, but um, we can only bring as many kids in as we have scholarships for because all of our students are scholarship recipients. So um, we select students based on like a multitude of criteria, mainly based on like both they, they have to come from a low income household, so a house that mm -hmm. qualifies for free and reduced lunch, but they also have to have like something that might have made it a challenge for them to achieve that post secondary education. So we get a lot of first generation college students. Um, a lot of students um, who might come from single parent households or from other things that might make, make it pose a challenge for them um, when it comes to reaching that post-secondary education. Um, and then we also look for students who we don't we don't necessarily choose the students with the best grades because we think that a lot of those students get all of the scholarships anyway. So you have your A plus 100s and some of our kids are at that level, but we try to reach out to students who who have that desire and they have that drive and they have that motivation and they want it, but they, they have something that might be making it a little bit more difficult or they maybe they're the ABC student that might not have gotten the, the full Bright Futures Scholarship, but they when they're in our program, we can help connect them with resources to get them to reach those goals. You bet. And that's, that's so important what you just mentioned, because obviously, as you mentioned, the A students, the the high achievers that are that are that are already uh, getting those A's and whatever they're gonna get some scholarships if they just put in for them right. But it is that middle of the road type of student, the one that wants to improve themselves, and maybe they have some challenges at home or things that are happening that are keeping them from achieving that higher level. But they are smart and motivated, so those kids are the ones that uh, hopefully you know um, are also being served by your program. And it sounds like that's the case. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it. What being a mentor entails, because that is a key element of this program, obviously, the mentorships. It absolutely is. And, you know, the mentors, I always bring up the scholarship part because, and that's what kind of attracts like people to our program, but the mentorship is like the bread and butter of our program. It's what makes it what it is. It's the most important aspect. Um, so our mentors are community volunteers who meet with our students on a regular basis. So we try to match students with mentors who have, we try to find someone who has some sort of thing in common with them, or at least that, the, that can meet with them at their school. Um, and meet with them in person. So we have this mentors will travel to the school you pretty regularly, usually once a week or at least twice a month. Um, and they kind of act as a support system for that student as someone to help them with whatever they might be going through, whether it be like just they might the student might need someone to just chat with and talk about life. They might need a little bit of extra push if they're falling behind in their classes. They might need information about careers or about college. So the mentor is just someone who's there regularly that kind of acts like, you know, their adult friend and supporter that can help guide them through that process and be someone one extra other than a parent it's kind yeah. of like that that extra adult figure that can inspire them and talk to them in that way so. exactly is is it a challenge to uh get the uh, mentors in in the area i mean i know we are here in uh, obviously okaloosa county santa rosa county you are in okaloosa county program is there a challenge getting mentors to sign up in okaloosa county um, it is a challenge mainly because it's it is a commitment because we ask people when they commit to be um, that they're they want to work with the program and we try to get someone who's willing to commit to at least a full school year with a student. Most of our mentors end up staying 
the whole time their student is in high school. So we have mentors that have been mentoring with us for 10 years. So once someone decides to volunteer with our program, they usually stay because it's it's a great program. It's a good program, but, yeah. Yeah, but, um, and you know, you get you get attached to your kids because um, <laughs> they, they're yours. And so it's like, it's once you start meeting with them, that's, that's your kid that you're helping them. But it is a challenge finding people, just especially this year, you know, we've had the pandemic, yeah. we had to go 100% virtual um, with our student service. And we kept a mentoring up while this year. Um, we actually, like, we kept 100% everything. We moved totally virtually. We had a whole system, and it was really great, but it made it to where we didn't have quite the outreach we normally have. I recruit mentors by word of mouth, by speaking to people who are already mentors, by going to events. Like, I met you at the Chamber event, and a lot of those have been shut down this year. Um, yes. We have a really large need for volunteers. And I know that the people are out there, but it's just a matter of making those connections. <laughs> we know they're out there and some of them are gonna be watching us hopefully here uh, uh, through this program. How does one become a mentor? What does it take? So, what do they do? So to become a mentor, I always say the first thing is to have a conversation with me or with if you know we have, we're the Okaloosa program, there's also take stock programs in, and you mentioned other parts of Florida, there's a take stock program in every county in Florida. So mm -hmm. reaching out to the student services coordinator from there is like the first step. We have an application process. We background check and fingerprint all of their interested mentors and we have a training process. Um, so once someone's interested, they would just reach out um, and we would get them connected with that application and then start the process of getting them embedded to work with the school district. So the volunteers have to um, align with the, the vetting process of the local school district for any volunteers um, and mentors to work directly with a student. Um, and then we work on matching them with a student. So once we have a mentor that's interested, I'll talk to them, get an idea of who they are, usually um, kind of give them more information about what our needs are, the schools that we have um, kids that need mentors in, an idea of the time that we need someone to get started. And then I'll get them to start the paper work and then when the time for them to start meeting their student we'll introduce them to the student we'll go with them to the school um, we'll show them around how to check into the school how to who to talk to um, the, since the mentors meet on school property we'll teach them like how to check the students out at a class and like where to meet and then we'll kind of set that introductory meeting and then um, let them start working from there Got it. And uh, go ahead and give us, uh, if you can, either a website and or contact numbers and email uh, slowly, if you don't mind, so people can write it down yes. as they hear it. Okay. <laughs> So well, there's a, a lot website? of ways to reach out to us. Yeah, so there's a couple. So we have, obviously, if you go to takestockinchildren.org, that's our statewide page. Um, and you can use that website to find local program contact info if you type in your county. Um, okay. We also have, um, because our local Take Stock in Children program is run through the Okaloosa Public Schools Foundation, you mm -hmm. can actually find information about us on the Okaloosa School District website. So if you search there, and then we have... The foundation for the Okaloosa Public Schools Foundation, we have our own website and there's info on there. So okay. it's the Okaloosa, I believe it's Okaloosa Public Schools Foundation, um, dot org, which you can connect to from the school district website. Um, we also have a Facebook page. So if you go Take Stock Okaloosa, that'll find you directly to us. It's Take Stock and Children Okaloosa. And messaging that Facebook page will connect you to, directly to us. Or you can email me directly. Um, and I can spell out my email, should I say? Yes, so, go ahead. My email address is my name, which is Nicole Snyder, N-I-C-O-L-E dot Snyder, S-N-I-D-E-R, at Okaloosa Schools, all one word. Dot com. So, schools .com. I'm, I'm glad they shortened that one because it used to be yeah, very to long. Be I remember that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okaloosa school, yeah, it used to be this crazy email. So just okaloosaschools.com. Um, and um, even if you go on the school district website, though, or even just search Take Stock and Children, usually you can find a way to get in touch with us. Um, somehow, even if you end up with someone in Tallahassee, they'll know how to point you to the local program that you're connected to. So if you're listening from Santa Rosa County and you're like, I want to be a mentor and you, Okaloosa doesn't work, just going on that website will help direct you to the right person. Outstanding. That's great information. Uh, Nicole, you and I were talking about the fact that, you know, sometimes you do have obviously uh, Hispanic uh, kids that are part of the program and uh, there's a language barrier that can take place even or maybe, maybe with a kid himself or herself and maybe with the parents. So are you in need of Hispanic 
individuals that are bilingual in Spanish and English that uh, can communicate with those kids and parents? We absolutely are. And we have several students right now that I'm looking to match in Okaloosa County that we would love to match with Hispanic mentors. And I try to match mentors with students who have something in common. And I know that it's important to have that, that connection. Very sometimes important. sometimes it matters, you know, most of our students do speak English when they're in the school system. But a lot of the times we have, um, we have problems with communicating with the parents because um, the school districts have translation, but um, my Spanish isn't what it used to be. So <laughs> I did. <laughs> and yeah, I grew up, it was my, my parents' first language, but here I am not speaking it <laughs> fluently. Um, I understand. So it, it is very useful to have like bilingual mentors, especially when it comes to just making that connection with the student. Um, we have yeah. a lot of the students. culture. The cultural connection is very important, bottom line. Yeah. Yes, you know, not Absolutely. necessarily just the language, obviously, is going to help with the barrier that may exist. But even if the barrier doesn't exist, that cultural connection between the mentor and the student uh, goes a long way because, you know, kids are looking for uh, role models, too, you know. Exactly. And, and this is a role model type program in many ways also. So what about other minorities, African-Americans? and there are other ethnic groups, you know, that, uh, that are out there that I'd yes, like I mean, to... We yeah, right. we have, I mean, we have students from multicultural backgrounds, from all, pretty much all backgrounds, but um, primarily we have African-American, Hispanic, and white students. Um, I, we, have a few, we have a few students from Asian backgrounds as well, and we have students who speak fluent English, some who have, who are bilingual. I mean, we, we have a lot of, you know, it just sort of depends on who applies to the program, but we try Bottom to... Bottom line is a variety, a variety of cultures, variety of people, variety of backgrounds is important. And, uh, it and is, so, yeah, it's what makes the, you know, having that variety is just what makes it so special. We just have that, the different, the diversity. I think it's so important. Exactly, exactly. I, a question, because I'm not uh, totally sure about this one. Uh, the program is a state or national program, correct? Uh, it, it's so it's program. funded, it's funded by the government, technically? Or officially? Sort of, um, yeah, it's kind of a partial. So we receive, um, so Take Stock in Children is a Florida state um, nonprofit organization that receives funding from the Department of Education to run their services. So we, um, through a grant program through the state of Florida, so we receive funding as a grant program for a mentoring program, but that doesn't fund the scholarships that we purchase. So the state of Florida sends programs, the money to run a program, so to pay staff and to pay for just mm -hmm. general program running according to the number of kids that are in the program. So okay. programs with a lot of kids get funding to have a lot of staff members, program with less kids, so on. So they pay um, based on that state funding. Um, so there's different, you know, the size of the Take Stock program differs county by county, and it kind of depends on what agency is running it. So here we're run by the Public Schools Foundation in Okaloosa. Oh, but, um, you know, in Miami, it'll look totally different. I think they have a thousand kids in their program, whereas we have uh, wow. 55 in ours wow. right now. And I guess my follow-up question to that, because we have a very generous community here, a community that supports a lot of causes, obviously. Can a, an individual, can a company donate towards the program, raise funds towards the program? Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, every kid in our program is sponsored by a scholarship that was provided by um, individual donors. Really? What's really cool about, yeah, so what's it really yeah. cool about donating to our program too is we um, receive matching funds from the state of Florida, from the Florida Prepaid Foundation for our scholarships to go towards scholarships. So we basically, we pay half the price of the cost of a scholarship because the Florida Prepaid Foundation um, matches all those funds. So if someone wants to fund a scholarship or even to donate towards a scholarship, it's basically like their money's going doubly as far. And then we offer the student that's funded by that money, all of the services of our program um, in addition to that. So 100% wow. of the donations go directly towards student scholarships. So it's like you can donate to a scholarship and a different program and it goes towards that scholarship, but we sort of like double your donation and then offer the mentoring services. We offer college success coaching. We do workshops for the students, full advocacy. Um, so we're doing so much more than just that scholarship funding. Well, outstanding. Well, I hope uh, that you, any uh, company owners that are out there listening, any uh, individuals that uh, love to support uh, education in this case, uh, you know, would consider uh, uh, donating or sponsoring uh, 
towards uh, the scholarships for the local kids here in Okaloosa County. Um, it's a great program, Nicole. I love it. I, I think it's, it's wonderful. Uh, thank you for all this great information you have given us. Any final message, any final words that you would like to say to whoever is watching? Um, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to listen to us today and just like reiterate how it's really great that we have a program that's connected in so many ways to the community. I think what makes us stand out is that we have mentors from all over the community, like, uh, you know, locally or all of a Belusa is represented, but even as a state, like the mentors that volunteer with our program are such a core component to it. It's like the bread and butter and it makes, uh, it gives it such variety and it's just so amazing to see um, how how the, the goodwill, I guess, the, the thought of yeah, people yeah. and how all of how much that they, what an impact it can make. One of my mentors, I, I sent out an interview to all of my mentors to ask them what their favorite part of being a mentor was. And one of them said something that stuck with me. And she said, I love what an impact I can make on a community by working with one person. And I just thought that was so cool. I love it. It's I like, you know, that. you're, yeah, you're working with one student, but you're you're influencing your community, and it's it's like a small way that you can make a difference because that one conversation you have with your student um, might make the difference in whether or not they get this scholarship that goes to college or whether they exactly. make this decision to go on this career route, and that could impact so many more people. So exactly. it's just really awesome and, to have and, and, and people it's, involved in a program. Yeah, I, I love that that the what she said what that person told you because you know it's it's a it's kind of the same thing that happens when people want to help something a charity or some you know that they they uh, sometimes do not because they say well i uh, i can't really make a difference i'm only helping one but if you help that one you are making a difference believe me you are going to make a difference you know so you got to start with one if you can't you, you can't you can't save the whole one. world exactly. start with one you know Yes, exactly. Well, thank you very much for coming uh, to Making Connections, Nicole. Uh, great program, wonderful information, and I know you work very hard, and uh, I hope we can meet again out there in the uh, networking piece of things that uh, that you do also uh, with the Chamber and other, and other activities. Uh, thank you for coming to Making Connections. We appreciate uh, you, and uh, we hope that uh, everyone that's listening will pay attention to uh, this wonderful program, Take Stock in Children, and go out to the website and check it out, and also uh, consider becoming a mentor. Uh, instamos a los hispanos que estén viendo este programa. Eh, que hay una gran necesidad de que la comunidad hispana se una a este programa a, a, también como mentors para a, ayudar a los jóvenes hispanos que están tratando de mejorar su educación, de mejorarse en la vida y este, se necesitan personas hispanas participando que sean bilingües, eh, es una de, los, de las partes que Nicole nos acaba de informar que están buscando personas de descendencia hispana para que apoyen a los jóvenes hispanos que son parte de Take Stock in Children. So thank you again, Nicole, for uh, being with us and uh, we'll be seeing you out there somewhere. Thank you again. You have a great rest of your day. <laughs> you too. All right. Bye. We'll be right back. Do you want to advertise to thousands of Hispanics and non-Hispanics in North, Northwest Florida and Southern Alabama? ¿Quieres promover tu empresa y producto a miles de hispanos y no hispanos? Connection is your most cost-efficient way to do so. Conexión es tu solución. We are the largest English and Spanish publication in our region. Our primary mission is to inform, guide, and educate our readers via interesting content. Somos la publicación mensual en español y en inglés de la más grande distribución en toda la región. Además de las 5,000 copias en papel, tenemos activa las redes sociales, incluyendo Facebook, Twitter e Instagram, y también por Internet. Conexión is your bridge to connect you to the growing Hispanic market in the region. Call us. Llámanos. These are some of the wonderful events taking place throughout our region in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, we start with the 2021 Concerts at the Landing in Fort Walton Beach. The concert series started on May 7th and is going to go on until October 1st. And each Friday night from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., there's a different and, and variety 
type of a band that is going to be playing on the main stage. They are also going to have wonderful uh, food, food available at the activity and a whole lot of fun for the entire family. Uh, join them for a family-friendly evening of live music. The 2021 concerts at the landing in Fort Walton Beach. Harbor Walk Village uh, is known for the great activities that uh, they organize throughout the year. Uh, but one of the best ones that they have each year is the Memorial Day concert celebration, kicking off um, on the 29th of May, 7 p.m., with a live band called Flash Flood. And then on Sunday, they're going to have Cadillac Willie and um, why a great fireworks display that takes place uh, after the band uh, finishes playing. The fun continues on the 31st, Monday the 31st, with a silent disco night. All of these events are taking place at Harbor Walk Village starting at 7 p.m. on Memorial Day weekend, the 29th through the 31st. Planetarium Nights at the Emerco Science Center is taking place on the first and third Thursdays of each month. The shows uh, begin at 6 and 7 p.m. And it is a wonderful opportunity for you all to go out there and enjoy the beautiful nights in our Emerald Coast. Planetarium Nights, the first and third Thursdays of the month at the Emerald Coast Science Center. The Navarre Beach Area Chamber of Commerce invites everyone to their Tunes by the Dunes, which kicks off on June 3rd, and they go on until August 12th. These are live music concerts that uh, take place at the Navarre Beach uh, Parks Sand Crab Pavilion, which is just east of the Navarre Bridge Fishing Pier in Navarre Beach. Enjoy great music uh, ranging from classic rock, reggae, southern rock, country, oldies, and much more. Every Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., starting on June 3rd and going on until August 12th. Papa, ¿qué es esto? Es mi lista de tareas. ¿Y qué es esto? Es una lista de las cosas más importantes que tengo que hacer hoy. Papá, uh -huh. ¿estoy en tu lista de cosas importantes? La mayor prioridad, pásala. Un mensaje de la Fundación para una vida mejor. Well, as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. So we come to the end of another Making Connections interview show, virtual edition. We want to thank uh, Nicole Snyder of the Take Stock for Children program for coming on and talking to us about that wonderful program. And we invite uh, everyone to support that program uh, by becoming a mentor or sponsoring and maybe raising funds for the uh, or towards the um, scholarships uh, for the kids that they serve. We want to invite you also to uh, continue following Conexión Media Group and Conexión through our social media outlets, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and also through our Conexión uh, YouTube uh, page uh, so that you can uh, watch this show and other uh, past uh, editions of Making Connections and also the Conexión on the Street segments that we, uh, that we put into our, our Conexión uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Please uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, the pandemic is still going on, so we still got to be careful out there. And uh, we will be seeing you uh, in our next edition of Making Connections.